As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Welcome to today's program, my friend. It is the end of the week, and I'm praying that God is going to give you the greatest weekend, but because it is the end of the week, today is the last day you can order my brand new series called Real Faith Versus Fake Faith. You want your faith to be real, not fake, and the subtitle says, How to Make Sure Your Faith is Real, Not Fake, and How to Really Put It to Work. This has been such a practical series, and it shows us how to use our faith. You need to hear this, and today's the last day that we're offering the series on the program. It comes in five parts in multiple formats, and it comes with a study guide that you know I love so much. Please get the study guide so you can read it while you see it or while you hear it. And today is also the last day this week that we're offering my book called Dream Thieves, Overcoming Obstacles to Fulfill Your Dreams. And I told you yesterday that I wrote this book right after our family moved to the lands of the former Soviet Union. That's where we still live. That's where this studio is. But when we first moved here, wow, there were so many obstacles to overcome and dream thieves that came against us. And I wrote this book during that period. It is really filled with life and revelation. I know that it will help you know how to use your faith to get through every obstacle. And then I immediately wrote another book right after this, which was called The Point of No Return, tackling your next new assignment with courage and common sense. When I wrote this book, I needed a lot of courage and I needed a lot of common sense. These two books were really born out of my life and they're about how to launch out in faith to do whatever it is that God has called you to do. So please order yours today and today is the last day that we're offering these on the program. And please remember that when you become a partner, we're going to quickly send you two books. One is called Life in the Combat Zone. The subtitle says, How to Survive, Thrive, and Overcome in the Midst of Difficult Situations. We send this to every person who becomes a partner with our ministry, along with Denise's book called the gift of forgiveness. This is our way of saying welcome to our partner family. And when you reach out to us, would you please let us know how to pray for you? Just give us a ring or send us your email. And the moment the phone rings or the moment your email shows up in our inbox, we're going to take that prayer need and we're going to go to the throne of grace and believe that God is going to move on your behalf. But we always pray better when we specifically know how. So when you call us, or write us and let us know how to pray. We pray better. So reach out to us and let us know how to pray for you. But I'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. My friend, this week we've been seeing that faith without works is dead. But before I get into this final teaching this week, I want to remind you about this mask. You say, Rick, what is that mask? This was a real mask that was used in the theatrical world prior to the first century. Well, in the theatrical world, when actors and actresses performed on the stage, they wore masks because they were pretenders. They were inauthentic. They were phony, pretending to be who they were not. They learned all the lines. They learned the lingo. They knew how to perform in order to get a big a round of applause from the crowd, but they weren't real. They were just pretenders. That is the word that Jesus used when he spoke to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and called them hypocrites. That word hypocrites is borrowed from the theatrical world. It describes people wearing a mask, phonies. When Jesus said, you're a bunch of hypocrites, he literally said, you've learned all the lines, you know what to say, you know the lingo, you know how to perform for the crowd to give you a round of applause, but you don't mean a word of it. You're just a bunch of fakes. That's literally what the word hypocrites means, and it refers to wearing a mask. But when you come to 2 Timothy 1 verse 5, Paul writes and says, Timothy, you have an unfeigned faith. That word unfeigned means real. 
no longer wearing a mask. The mask is removed. This is the real deal. You're absolutely bona fide. You are the authentic real deal. So there can be a real faith, but that also means there can be a fake faith. And that's what we've been looking at this week. We want to have real faith. And we've seen that real faith is always accompanied with works. If it doesn't have works, it's not a real faith. We saw that Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday. And today we're going to wrap up and we're going to go back to James chapter 2. And I want to begin reading today in verse 20, where the Bible says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he'd offered Isaac his son upon the altar? This is what we covered yesterday. Verse 22, seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. Let's begin right there, but I hope you have your Bible open and something to write with and to take notes because today you're going to want to take notes. Let's begin in verse 22, where the Bible says, Seest thou how faith wrought with Abraham's works, and by works was faith made perfect. The word seest is the Greek word blepo. It means to watch, to see, to behold. It was often used in the Greek language to jolt and jar a listener to really stand up, to perk up his ears and hear what is about to be said, because it is so important. And in this verse, James says, do you see? Do you understand? Are you really listening? Do you see how faith wrought with his works? And a Greek wrought with is the Greek word soon ergo. And listen to what the word soon ergo means. The tense means working with. It pictures cooperating with someone to work with, to assist. It pictures two or more people or components working together to mutually accomplish a task, which means faith being alone doesn't work. It has to have a partner. And the partner of faith is deeds. It is actions. It is accompanying works. And Abraham had faith and he had works. And that's why the verse says, seest thou how faith wrought or worked with his works. And it says, and faith was made perfect. But the Greek says, and by works was faith made perfect. The Greek literally says, ek ton ergon. The word ek means out of. A better translation would be out of the midst of works, from works, in participation with his works. It was not faith alone, but right in the midst of his works, out of his works was faith made perfect perfect. Made perfect is a Greek word which means it reached its end, to reach the end aim, to function at full strength. That means faith functions at full strength when it has accompanying actions. It pictures one that is full grown. So this is no longer an immature spiritual person. This is a person that's come into spiritual manhood. It pictures transitioning from being youthful and immature to one that is full grown and mature. It denotes spiritually mature individuals. Abraham had faith, but when he put actions to his faith, it developed him. It took him to a new realm. And in fact, verse 23 says, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God. That word believed, a form of the Greek word pistis, which is the New Testament word for faith. It describes one who is totally, totally persuaded, so persuaded that he has a rock solid belief. He's convinced to the core. And because of his faith, God imputed to him righteousness. That word imputed, the Greek word logizomai, and listen to what it means. It means to mathematically count, to add it up, to calculate, to tabulate, or to make a conclusion. It was used in the bookkeeping world to portray the idea of a balance sheet or a profit and loss statement that a bookkeeper prepared at the end of the month or year. It means to make a calculation that is logical and correct, to count, to deem, to decide, to impute, to reckon. God added it all up. He saw that Abraham had the right words. He could see that his words had actions. This equated to real faith and God imputed it to him or calculated it to him as righteousness. The word righteousness belongs to all of us if we're in Christ Jesus. If we put our faith in the Lord, the Greek word dikaiosune from the Greek word dikai. 
And the word DK is the Greek word for a judicial rendering, which means if you're operating in faith, if you've ever placed your faith in Christ, God has made a judicial verdict about you. It is a verdict that declares one to be legally approved. You are legally approved in the eyes of God to be made right, to be declared righteous by the court, to have an upright standing before a court of law. And in this case, the word dikaiosune here translated righteousness and translated righteousness throughout the books of the New Testament pictures God as the judge and the court is heaven and the great judge and the court of heaven has deemed us a status of approval or right standing or righteousness. Wow, that is so powerful. And in fact, verse 23 goes on to say, Abraham was called the friend of God. The word called is the Greek word kaleo, which means to call or to invite. And it always means to be called to something. And in this verse, it can be translated two ways. He was called to be the friend of God. Of God, And it tells us that when you walk in faith and you have accompanying faith actions, you qualify to be the friend of God. And it could also be translated, he was called by others, the friend of God. You're called to be the friend of God. And when you walk in faith and you have accompanying actions and manifestations, people will look at you and say, wow, that person really knows God. That person is dear to God. And that leads us to the word friend, which in Greek is the word philos. And the word philos describes a friend, someone dearly loved and prized in a personal, intimate way, a trusted confidant. Abraham was the trusted confidant of God. How would you like that to be said about you? One held dear in a close bond and personal affection, a highly valued friend. And this word philos in this context could even be translated a close associate. He was the associate of God. Why? He qualified for it because he said he had faith and he demonstrated that he had faith. These two things qualified him to be called to be the friend, the associate of God, the confidant of God. That is just amazing. That can be true of you. But then when you get to James 2, verse 24, it says, You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. The word how is not in the Greek text. The Greek simply says, You see then that by works. The word see that is used here is the word hare, which means you can make an observation and come to a deduction or come to a conclusion. You can observe by studying the scripture and seeing Abraham's actions. You can observe how that that, the Greek word hoti, it's pointing to a conclusion by works. The Greek says ex ergon, out of the midst of his works, a man is justified and not by faith only. When the Bible says not by faith only, the word not is a Greek word ouk. It is an emphatic no. The word ek is the word out. It means out of. The word faith is the Greek word pistis. When you put these two, all these words together as a phrase, it means not by faith alone, not by faith only. Mm. It's faith and works. My friends, if you're really moving in faith, it will have accompanying actions. And the Bible says that you can observe this in the example of Abraham. But then we come to verse 25. Now, maybe you're somebody who says, well, I'm just not as spiritual as Abraham. Okay, the Bible's going to give us another example, and you can surely say you're as spiritual as this person. Listen to it, James 2, verse 25. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot. We're talking about a prostitute. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and had sent them out another way. The word likewise in Greek means likewise in similar fashion, equally, equally. And now we find that a harlot operated in faith equally in the same way that Abraham operated in faith. And it says, was not Rahab the harlot? Well, this Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute in Jericho who worked with the Hebrew spies and because she moved in faith and demonstrated faith, she ended up in the lineage of Jesus. She is an ancestor 
of Jesus. And the Bible says Rahab the harlot. Make no mistake, in Greek it is the word porne, it is the word for a prostitute. A prostitute or a woman who sells herself for sexual services. But she was justified by works. And the word justified, again, the Greek word dikaio, from the word dike, which describes a judicial verdict. Here, it is a verdict that declares one to be legally approved, made right, or declared to be righteous by the court, to have an upright standing before a court of law. And in this case, again, God is the judge and the audience is heaven. Heaven is the court. In the eyes of God and in the eyes of heaven's court, she was justified. She was approved. She was legally made right. How? She had faith. We know that because she believed God, but she had works that came with it. And when the Bible says justified by works, guess what? In Greek, again, it says ex ergon. A better translation would be out of works. In the midst of works, it describes accompanying actions. She didn't just say she believed, she demonstrated it with her works. And the Bible says she received the messengers and had sent them out another way. The word received means to take under, to take under one's roof, to readily and warmly receive under one's roof. And my friend, this put her life at risk. But let's look at this very story from Joshua chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Let's read it together. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go and view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house, that's Rahab, named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. Verse 3. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thy house, for they be come to search out all the land. Verse 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them. She hid them. Here her faith is already showing a demonstration or she's putting faith works to her faith. And she said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Verse 5. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Whither the men went, I don't know. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. Verse 6. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof, verse 7. And the men pursued after them all the way to Jordan under the fords. And as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate, verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up to them upon the roof, verse 9, and said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. This was her faith speaking. Listen to this. And that your terror is fallen upon us and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Shion, Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord, your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. And she protected them. And when she protected them, she put her life at risk. She put her life at risk. She believed and she acted. There were accompanying actions that went along with her faith. And that is why Hebrews 11 verse 31 says, by faith, by faith, the harlot Rahab received not them, perished not with them that believed not whom when she had received the spies. She acted in faith and she had accompanying faith Actions, But let's go back to James 2, verse 26. But I want you to see even Rahab the harlot had faith and put actions to her faith and she ended up in the lineage of Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you feel spiritual or not. If Rahab the harlot can move in faith with accompanying actions, so can you. But listen to James 2, verse 26. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. This is an amazing verse. When it says, for as, it's the Greek word, it means just as, 
even as the body without the spirit is dead. The word body here, the Greek word soma, it describes the physical body. For even as the physical body without the spirit is dead, the word without, the Greek word chorus, it describes the body being apart from the spirit. Even as the physical body without the spirit, the word spirit, the Greek word pneuma, it describes to a person's spirit or their inner life force. For even as the physical body apart from the human spirit is dead, and that word dead is the Greek word nekros, which depicts a lifeless corpse, a cadaver with no life left in it. There's no breath in the lungs. There's no heartbeat. There's no pulse in his rest. It is a body disconnected to life. It is a corpse. And this verse says, for even as the physical body apart from the human spirit is a corpse, it is a cadaver, it has no life in it. It may have a form, but the person is gone. They're missing. I remember when Denise's daddy died and we went to the funeral home and we saw his body lying in the casket. Denise and I stood there and we looked at his body and it looked like him, but he was absent. He was not there because the body without the spirit is dead. It was simply an empty shell. And there are many people who say they have faith, but because they have no accompanying works, it's just a form. It's just an empty shelf. It's like a dead body that's disconnected to life. It's a cadaver. Faith always accompanies actions. And this verse says, so faith without works is dead also, the word so means in a similar way, in like fashion, faith without works is dead. Which means if you see someone who says they have faith, but they do nothing, it is the equivalent of looking at a corpse in a casket. They have a form of faith. They say they have faith. It kind of sounds like faith, but because there are no accompanying actions, the Bible says it's dead. It's a corpse. It's not a living faith. So let me ask you, are you just speaking faith? Is your mouth filled with the words of faith or are you putting actions to your faith? Real faith always has accompanying actions. I'll be back in just a moment and I'm going to pray for you. How do you know if you're moving in a kind of faith that will really change circumstances? Since there is a real faith and a fake faith, are you sure that you are operating in real faith? Fake faith won't do much, but real faith moves mountains. And nothing is more important than making sure you have mountain-moving faith that produces results. In this five-part series, Real Faith versus Fake Faith, you'll see and learn that real faith has corresponding actions, the role of faith versus works, about Abraham's faith, about Rahab's heroic faith, about how your faith can work wonders, Available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. You'll learn how to stir up the fire of God that is in you with real Bible faith. You can also purchase the books Dream Thieves and The Point of No Return. In these two powerful books, Rick will show you how to identify the thieves that come to steal your dream and how to keep going forward once you've passed the point of no return. Rick says, these two books are some of the best materials I've ever written and are designed to help people stay on target with their dreams until they see them fulfilled. Dream Thieves and the Point of No Return can be yours today for only $15 each. Don't miss this special offer. The series Real Faith vs. Fake Faith and Dream Thieves and the Point of No Return. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Friends, this is Rick Renner. I want to give you a good report. It is amazing, but we just signed the papers to purchase our new building in Tulsa, a new headquarters for our ministry. We've been in the same location for years and years and years, and we've outgrown it. And because so many people are reaching out to us for more teaching and for prayer and for ministry, we need more space so we can effectively minister to them. And at the same time, we're constructing our studio in Moscow, where we're going to be filming the most wonderful Bible teaching programs that touch people all over the world. 
that the only reason we're able to do all of this at one time is because of people like you that are members of our giving team. And because of your gifts, we're able to do this in Tulsa, we're able to do this in Moscow. And my friends, I want to remind you that it's not about the buildings. No, 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 it's about people that need to be touched. We just need space so that we can minister to them. And I wanna say thank you so much for being a part of the giving team and remaining a part of the giving team as we get the buildings ready and put up walls and get ready to produce programming and to minister to people all over the face of the planet. And if you're not a partner and a member of our giving team yet, please become a part of our team today. Pastor Rick's heart is just to get the message of the gospel out there. And because he is absolutely a man after God's own heart, when God says do this, he says yes. I know that we're gonna have substantial growth just because that is Pastor Rick's vision. Pastor Rick's heart is for people and that's why he always says call in for prayer because he's sincere and he means it and we do too. We're all very honored and humbled. It's just been a wonderful thing to see the growth that has happened because we know the growth comes with people's lives being changed and that's what our heart is about. Um, these are the end times that we're living in and there are a lot of new believers. There are many people wonderful it's wonderful to hear that um, coming to coming to know jesus for the first time and um, i'm so thankful that we have the tools and the resources available ready for them when they need it we're just privileged to get to lend our gifts and our touches to written communication from this ministry Today we have wrapped up our new series, which is called Real Faith versus Fake Faith. Next week, we're gonna be teaching on taming the tongue and being able to discern the source of revelations. But today we're wrapping up this series, which is called Real Faith versus Fake Faith, how to make sure your faith is real, not fake, and how to really put it to work. And this is the last day that we're offering this series on the program. So if you intend to order it, please order it today. And remember that it comes with a study guide. And today is also the very last day this week, which we're offering my books. One is called Dream Thieves, Overcoming Obstacles to Fulfill Your Dreams, and the accompanying book, which is called The Point of No Return, Tackling Your Next Assignment with Courage and Common Sense. You will devour these books. And this is the last day this week that we're offering it on the program. So please order these and the series by going online or by giving us a call and let us know how to pray for you when you reach out to us because we really want to pray for you and I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you that if Rahab the prostitute could move in faith with accompanying actions, we can too. So we ask you, Lord, to show us how to do our faith, how to take it from beyond our mouth in mere words and put it into actions we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you Monday, but please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.